there was an imam of the haram. I can't remember which, which imam it was, uh, you know, like the, the, his name is slipping my mind, but I remember hearing a story about how he was such a troublesome child. Like he was always getting in trouble and everything. And every time he would do something wrong, his mom would make da'at, like, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you the imam of the haram, right? Until, subhanAllah, he reached the point of becoming that, right? So, so you know, there was always a positive perception, you mm-hmm. know, and um, my mother-in-law once, you know, once said something where a child always needs somebody who will unconditionally view them as, as, as good, right? As, you know, with, with positive expectations, with husn right? Mm-hmm. Like this concept Islamically of giving people the benefit of the doubt. Who's more deserving of benefit of the doubt and husn than our own children, right? And so even when they are struggling with something, to check ourselves, like you said, as parents, to ask yourself, okay, how much of this is, you know, am I having unrealistic expectations of their capability at the moment? Because capability and capacity is different than an overall quality, right? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, that's that's why, you know, we don't, we don't, um, there's another research study that talks about when we praise our children, if we praise them in accord, like by saying, oh, you're so smart, versus if we praise them for their effort in working hard, the result is really different. So children who are praised as being smart will not feel comfortable trying harder, like trying to challenge themselves because they're afraid they're going to no longer hold on to that quality if they fail. But -hmm. children who are praised for working hard, which is something within their control, intelligence is not fully something within our control, but children who are praised for working hard, they then will challenge themselves and keep going and keep, and keep trying. So one of the things, you know, checking, checking, what are the words that I'm using when I'm speaking to my children? right? Am I using terminology that is demeaning? Or am I using terminology that's going to make them feel better about themselves? The way that we speak to our children becomes their inner dialogue, like their Mm self-talk. So if we tell, you know, if we tell our child, we make a diet like this mom of this um, imam, and we say, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you, you know, uh, the imam of the haram, or make you from amongst his righteous worshipers, or, you know, give you the best and give you goodness, right? If we make these diets for them, in these moments of frustration, that's such an amazing intervention, yeah. if we could, if we could do that with our children. And it makes them, it, it helps them to acknowledge that even when I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do, or even when I'm failing at something, even when I'm struggling at something, I'm still worthy of love. And I'm still viewed in a positive light overall, right? So I think checking in on what words are we using when we're talking, you know, talking to our children when especially.